Two years ago, when we came to Los Angeles, I really believed that the greatness of the Raiders would be in its future. And with all the great, with all the great teams we've had, I think today that this organization, this team, this coaching staff dominated so decisively that two things must be said. Not only, in my opinion, are you the greatest Raider team of all time, Thank you. I think you're ranked with the great teams Thank of all time that have ever played any professional sport. Commitment to excellence, the motto of the Raiders. And once again, Coach Tom Flores fulfilled that commitment in a Super Bowl. The final score, Los Angeles 38, Washington Redskins 9. They have turned back the team that many just a few weeks ago were trying to rank with the greatest of all time. They have turned them back in the most shattering fashion imaginable. The NFL has had its great teams. They have come from Green Bay, Dallas, Miami, and Pittsburgh. But perhaps none has matched the muscle and mystique of the Raiders. years the Raiders have been the winningest team in all of professional sports. When history the harshest of judges comes to a decision on Al Davis's Raiders. It will look to Super Bowl 18 for guidance. Like all athletic contests, Super Bowl 18 was not only a game, but a true test of men. And right from the start, the Raiders proved they had the best men. Early in the first quarter, Washington's assistant coach Wayne Severe prepared his punting team for the game's first critical play. Pun alert. Pun alert. He's to punt. Greg Pruitt waits back at his own 30. Hayes needs a good punt now. He's going to have the wind at his back. High snap. He goes up. Block. It's going to be blocked into the end zone. The Raiders on a chase. It'll be recovered in the end zone. It'll be recovered for a Raider touchdown. Lightning has struck where he's black and silver. Derek Jensen, number 31, blocked the kick, and I believe he recovered it. Let's go. We can't worry about that one. Oh, yeah. That guy just took an inside charge in Otis, and he missed him. The game's first touchdown was the result of an outstanding effort by Derek Jensen, number 31, the captain of the Raiders special team. At the snap of the ball, Jensen cut inside of the Redskins, Otis Wansley. And when Clint Didier moved out to block Lester Hayes, Jensen had an open path to the punt. contrast to the aggressive play of the Raiders special teams was the strangely conservative game plan of the Raiders offense. Throughout the first quarter, it was a carefully controlled mixture of short, safe passes. It was also a ticking time bomb. And early in the second quarter, it went off.
Cliff Branch, number 21, is a talkative little receiver with a gift of grass. And although he's 35 years old, he still had enough speed to beat both Anthony Washington and Darrell Green to the ball for a 50-yard gain for the Raiders. Two plays later, quarterback Jim Plunkett again located Branch. This time in the end zone for a 13-yard touchdown. For the second time, young Anthony Washington, number 24, was outmaneuvered by Branch. One quick inside move, and Branch was wide open. Another old pro who contributed to the success of this play was center Dave Dog, whose alert block prevented a blitzing linebacker from sacking Plunkett. Back is Plunk at the pass. Going to the end zone. Branch wide open. Falling down. Touchdown. Did you see Tom Flores there, Bill? He was even getting excited about it. Well, listen, Tom has uh, <laughs> given Grant some emotion on the sideline a couple of times. The Raiders led 14 to nothing and had scored with their special teams and their offense. But the storyline of this Super Bowl would be the Raiders' defense and its ability to disarm and dominate the Redskins' heralded offense. The key figures in the Raiders' defense were the cornerbacks, number 37, Lester Hayes, and number 22, Mike Haynes. The Redskins' wide receivers, Charlie Brown and Art Monk, became their reluctant partners in a demanding dance that would affect every phase of the Raider defense. bump and run, and the coverage by Hayes and Haynes was so intimidating that neither Brown nor Monk caught a single pass in the first half. The ability of the cornerbacks to single cover the Redskins' two best receivers relieved the Raider linebackers of certain pass coverage responsibilities and allowed them to crowd the line of scrimmage and blitz more frequently. While the outside linebackers pressured Joe Theismann, the inside linebackers filled the gaps to stop John Riggs. Led by number 55, Matt Millen, and Bob Nelson, number 51, the Raiders held the mighty Riggins to only 64 yards in 26 carries. His longest run of the day was a mere eight yards. Other teams were forced to use their safeties to help cover Brown and Monk. But because the Raider cornerbacks could cover them alone, safety Mike Davis, number 36, was free to come forward and help stop Riggins. Nose tackle Reggie Kinlaw, number 62, was another reason why Riggins could find no running room. He overpowered center Jeff Boston and prevented Riggins from gaining yardage up the middle. During the regular season, the Redskins scored more points than any team in history. But the Raiders crushed Washington's offense and reduced the NFL's all-pro quarterback to a hesitant passer who lost yardage making up his mind. With only 12 seconds to go in the first half, and with the ball on the Redskin 12, 
everyone expected the troubled Redskins to run out the clock and try to regroup at halftime. But Raider assistant coach Charlie Sumner had a hunch. When the two teams played in October, the Redskins had been in a similar situation and had thrown a little screen pass to Joe Washington that gained 67 yards. Anticipating the same play, Sumner replaced Matt Millen with a pass defense specialist, Jack Squirek, number 58, and instructed him to play man for man on Joe Washington. Here come the Redskins with 12 seconds to go in the half. Trailing 14 to 3. Weisman back, looks off to the left, and he fires it out there. Intercepted! Jack Squirek! Touchdown Raiders! I don't believe it! Holy Toledo! A screen pass, and they looked like they knew it was coming. Man ran right for it. I guarantee they looked like they knew that play was coming. Sumner's hunch was right. When Theismann dropped back, Squirek raced toward Washington, then picked off the pass intended for him and waltzed in for the touchdown. Squirek's interception was the most telling blow of the game and gave the Raiders a 21-3 halftime lead. An electrifying, stunning development as Jack Squirek becomes the proud possessor of a Super Bowl 18 touchdown. Bill, I'm flabbergasted. I, I cannot believe that the Redskins, back on their own 12-yard line, with 12 seconds to go in the half, would do that. Steve Bell Network. 30 minutes, baby. 30 minutes. What do we want, man? It's oh, kind of oh, 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 Our game. We got 30 minutes of Raider football, baby. 30 yeah, minutes of Raider football, and it's all ours. Let's go. No let up. No let up. Let's go. go. In the first half, the Raiders had defused pro football's most potent offense. But in the second half, the Redskins showed flashes of the brilliance that had burned other defenses throughout the season. In the third quarter, Joe Theismann called on a variety of receivers to move 69 yards in eight plays to the edge of the Raiders' end zone. It's too early for the Redskins to panic. They, they just got to play good, hard Redskins football. They can get back into this football game. If there's ever a team that could come back from a 21-3 halftime lead, it is the Redskins. They've scored 30. They've averaged 34 points a game. Boy, this is going to do a lot for that whole Redskins football team to get in right here. Here's Riggins, right side. Bolt, touchdown, Washington Redskins. No doubt about it. And they played Redskins football all the way on that drive. They have momentum back down. They get them right back in the football game. They just showed the silver and black that the burgundy and gold has come to play. The momentum that the Redskins established was slightly dissipated on the point after. When Don Hasselbeck charged through all pro tackle Joe Jacoby and blocked the kick. Here's the extra point. Blocked! Blocked! 87. Two blocks. Don Hasselbeck, the tight end, blocked it. It was 21 to 9 and there was still hope for Washington. They had scored 17 unanswered points in the fourth quarter in that earlier game against Los Angeles. This time, however, the Raiders took the ball and turned out the lights.
said they were going to do it. By golly, so far, they are doing it, dominating this Washington Redskins team. Not many teams have done that to the Redskins. No team has done that to the Redskins this year. adjustment by Marcus. He saw that opening and when he did cut back, he had plenty of room and just had to sidestep one linebacker as he made it into the end zone. Scoreboard showing the Raiders 28, the Redskins 9 and we'll be right back. Late in the third quarter, Los Angeles committed a rare mistake. Cliff Branch fumbled and Washington recovered in scoring position on the Raider 36. But the vital organs of the Redskin offense were no longer functioning. And three plays gained only nine yards. A field goal, a field goal means a 17 will win for us by one. Although we ought to go for it here. With it fourth and one, Riggins was the only choice. Might as well die with your boots on. Here comes Riggins, left side. No, he won't make it. Well, I don't know. I think it might be close enough to measure. He fell forward. Once again, it was a Raider linebacker who delivered the fatal blow. Rod Martin overpowered tight end Rick Walker, and with some help from Mike Davis, stopped Riggins short of the first down. He did not make it. No, he didn't. So the fourth down fails, and the Raiders have taken over at their own 26-yard line. You know, as soon as the sun went down and this became a night game, the Raiders immediately started playing better. As Washington's hopes faded into the dying daylight, on came Marcus Allen, running with the night. Rocket giving to Allen, sending a wide left. He has to reverse his field, but he, and he gets away for a moment. Comes back up to the middle, 30, 25. Touchdown was a play called 17 Bob Trey O. The Raiders have used it for years, but no one ever ran it quite the way Allen did in Super Bowl 18. The play was designed to go inside the corner linebacker, but Allen took it too wide, and when he saw safety Ken Coffey charging in unblocked, he reversed his field. What began as an ugly, busted play turned into a beautiful 74-yard touchdown run, the longest in the history of the Super Bowl. This record-breaking run was the centerpiece of a dazzling display by Marcus Allen, who was chosen the game's most valuable player. In the fourth quarter, Allen's ball carrying set up a field goal, and he finished the day with 191 yards rushing, the most ever by anyone in a Super Bowl. He was lightning in a game ruled by thunder, and he lit up the Super Bowl sky with a history-making performance. Let's keep dominating this team. Let's keep dominating. Keep dominating. Leave no doubt. That's right. That's it's a music. The Raiders have always talked a mean game. And on this Sunday, they played one. For the Redskins, this was a defeat the dimensions of which they had never experienced. A rout from which no honor could be salvaged. At the heart of this darkness was the Raider defense. 
they had stripped the Redskins of their most trusted weapons and sacked Joe Theismann six times. Nothing on earth that blocked or tackled or passed or ran could have stopped the Raiders on Black Sunday. Feisman could see him. He was jolted loose from the ball, and the Raiders take it away. And the Raiders' celebration will start. In Super Bowl 18, the Raiders again scaled the heights of football greatness and stood alone on the summit. A team of young men filled with promise and old veterans filled with pride. Raiders are an honor to the team's glorious past and the world champions of pro football's presence.